really am not dating myself too much if I tell you that when I was in high school, the Macarena was really, really big. You probably have heard it. You know, with that dance that goes like do 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 right? Okay. But here's a question. Who's the artist who wrote the song? Everyone knows it. Everyone knows the dance. Who is the artist? You probably have no idea. Let me tell you why. They never made another song that was a hit. So that's called a one-hit wonder. And in this episode, we're going to talk about one-hit wonders on the math section. There are always going to be some questions that without fail will show up one time. And they look a little complicated unless you know exactly how to do them. So it's kind of like, if it's easy to learn, why not learn? And you can just nail those questions, which you know will appear. In this episode, we're going to take a look at four one-hit wonders. And then afterwards, we'll take a look at Sokotoa, which is a trigonometry question that can help you easily answer two out of the four trigonometry questions on the ACT. For One Hit Wonders, you're always going to see a question about the fundamental counting principle, a question about matrices, a question about the equation of a circle, and a question testing if you can find the area of a parallelogram. And you might be thinking, oh my god, I don't know how to do any of these things, it sounds really complicated. The reason I picked them out is because they're actually very simple to learn. So we're gonna quickly go through these and you'll see how you can really easily pick up these points on test day. First, fundamental counting principle. Here I am in my closet deciding what to wear. I have three skirts, five shirts, six pairs of, uh, six pairs of shoes, and two pairs of socks. If I mix and match these elements, how many total different outfits can I make? An interesting question you've probably seen on a practice test. So, okay, students do all sorts of things, you know, making a list of how many options they have, no need. The fundamental counting principle says you just multiply all your different options and that's the total amount of combinations that you have. So here we go. It's just three times five times six times two. Okay, well, five times six times, five times six, that's 30, times two, 60, times three. 180. So 3 times 5 times 6 times 2, 180. And we have 180 different kinds of outfits I can make with these combinations. Let's look at a more difficult problem. Once in a while you'll see these, and these require an extra step, but you can still do it with no problem. How many different combinations are possible for a seven digit telephone number? Also, just an interesting question. I'm kind of curious myself. Well, Okay, think about what we did before. We thought about how many choices we had for each option and we multiplied them, right? We had, let's say, three skirts, two shirts, so how many choices for each and then multiply them. Here, we know we have seven different options, right? So seven d different numbers in our telephone number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the question is, how many choices for each one of those slots for the number. Okay, this is the part where it's harder. You have to think, huh, how many choices are available there? Well, for each digit of a phone number, 10 choices, right? You've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 10. So, how many different combinations are possible for a seven digit number? Well, 10 options for every one of the slots. So you would have 10 times 10 times 10 etc. for each of the seven slots. So really, 10 to the seventh power.